All right, today I'm going to teach you how to do the Zurcher deadlift. Um, a lot of people tend to make all types of different technique and cue videos for things like conventional deadlift, sumo deadlift, um, bench press, you know, squat overhead press. There's thousands you can find them on YouTube in literally less than a second, right? Super training, you know, Omar Esau, whatever channel. But with the books, Eric Buchenhagen, shout out, said is that no one is making videos on for cues and how to really do the movement of the Zercher deadlift. Not the Zercher um, cycle where you take the bar, you put it on your knees and then you come up with it. No, just the Zercher deadlift, which I'll just, I'll just demonstrate. Which looks like this. More or less. So, I'm gonna teach you how to do that today. All right, so. The first thing I want you to do when you think about the slip is you want to think about being mobile. Now, you can see all types of people doing different splits and stuff like Fujimufu and all these people doing like really deep squats and pausing at the bottom and not rounding their lower back or not having their heels come off the ground. You want to work on your mobility before doing this lift. Now, some people say, oh, you don't need to do anything before you lift. Well, I, I honestly think that's not true, especially in this culture where people sit all day. I am one college student, so I understand the value of mobility. Especially for a lift like this where it's so deep, I mean, this is a bent bar. Purposely, you know, using this bar to demonstrate and it, it's still really low. So I want you to check out my how I, how I stretch, my stretching routine video. And I think that'll help you out before you even start. So now let's get started. The Zercher deadlift starts from the floor and the elbows. It has nothing to do with the hands. The hands are completely taken out of the lift. Unlike a researcher cycle, where you take the bar, you deadlift it, you put it on your knees, and then you come under it and do like a researcher rack pull of sorts. So, for this lift, I think one of the most important things is probably just finding your footing. So, I set the bar how I want to make sure everything's even, I line up to the bar properly, you know, and I, my, my best um, stance is a wide stance, you know, a sumo deadlift stance. So I'm going to take a stance in between my squat stance and my sumo stance. So it's going to be pretty wide, but not too wide. Because what happens when you go too wide on this lift is you don't have, you already have bad leverage to begin with, but you're giving yourself even worse leverages because you can't use your quads. I'm down here, right? There's not, there's not really a whole lot. I, I can't push my, um, my pelvis down any farther, but if I'm here, I can come all the way down. And I can use that bounce to come out of the bottom. And this is the biggest thing right here. I see people do this lift, right? They come down, right? They get their stance, they come under, and they go boom, boom, and they take like 10 seconds sitting down here, and they think, oh, I'm so tight, I'm gonna be so strong. Nope, Eric talked about it himself. He said, when you do this, when you do what I just did, and you sit down there for, you know, five, sometimes even like eight to 10 seconds, think about what your body is doing. Like, so we have a squat, right? We know that bouncing at the bottom of a squat is a lot easier than pausing at the bottom position because you don't get that stretch reflex. That's a natural tendency that, that muscles do. So what I do in my video that I'll show is I do what Eric does, is I come up, I get my stance, right? I come up, I put my arms up like this, and then I swoop under the bar, and I push my hands forward, boom! I bounce off my calves, and I drive my chest up as hard as I can and push my hips through. That's one of the most important things. Don't do this movement like a squat. It's not a zero squat, it's called a zero deadlift for a reason. It's all about the hip hinge. And what the hip hinge is, is the movement from this position, watch here, to this position. It's not so much about the squat with the, with the quads. It's not so much about that. Because if you, if, you, if you treat it like a squat, look what happens. And then I have to use lower, too much lower back at the end. What you want to do is use your lower back the entire time, use your hamstrings and all of the muscles of your <clears throat> posterior chain the entire time instead of waiting because you think your quads are strong so you're going to use them first. No, that is not the most efficient way to do this lift. We're already in a compromised position. There's no need to make it harder than it is. So I'm going to demonstrate how I do this without sitting down, like twiddling my thumbs at the bottom for 20 seconds and without using my quads too much.
And another thing, when you sit down, don't, don't do this with the bar. And just let it come down with you. And don't try to control it with your lower back like a, like a Romanian deadlift. Don't do that. That is not smart. It's already in your elbows away from your hips. You don't want to come down with the, with the force in that way. It's not smart. Just don't do it. Plus, if you do that, you come with it, you're probably going to hit your knee, and it really hurts when it, when it hits your actual knee bone. So, I'll demonstrate one more time. And I'll get some cues. Cue time! So, foot stance, exactly how I want it. I figured this out, I've done this for a month. I come down. First thing I do, I get the biggest belly of air I possibly can. I push out like someone's going to punch me, and I boom! I push my stomach out, and everything, this whole area is completely full, and it's as strong as it can possibly be. As strong as you can be. That's what you want. I want you to think of this lift. As strong as I can be. Because then, everything will fly. No matter what. It's all in your mind. So I come in. Boom! Big belly breath. Come in and I swoop and I go. Boom! Let's do it one more time. Boom! I'm going to set it down. You know, just like that. So, now let's get into some more advanced things. Let's talk about first how to get past a sinking point on the floor. I talked about the stretch reflex, but what's the most important besides just that is getting your arms set. If you get your arms set, right, and you're here, and they start here, right, you're just gonna slip out. I have a video where the bar just slipped out of my grasp because I just didn't hook my elbows far. I'm not here, I'm not here. I'm here, I'm deep in, and I'm pulling it into me. So that's why the scooping technique works, because you really get your arms under it. People think, oh, well, I can do that just by doing it slow and just going one at a time. No. You're losing power off the floor, and you're going to end up using too much lower back because your leg drive is diminished. Obviously, you can't push as hard when you're sitting there in a pause position first for 10 seconds than when you can when you bounce off. Even if you pause and bounce, it's not the same as just coming down and bouncing. It's not the same. So that's like one of the biggest tips. Second, comfortability of the lift. You can see I'm wearing a hoodie, I'm wearing a long sleeve t-shirt under this, and then I'm wearing um, knee wraps over my forearms. Now the most important thing about when you wear knee wraps, or knee sleeves, or elbow sleeves, is that you have them even. You don't want to have a whole bunch of it bunched up here, because then what happens when you go under, the bar just going to fly right out. So you want to have it nice and even. And of course, it gets loose. All you do is re wrap it. But, and if you don't like this, all you do is take it off and wear a long sleeve shirt and then wear a hoodie over. Because it does really, really hurt your elbows. In fact, well, not your elbows, your, your forearms. My forearms are black. So I want you to really be careful with how you go about that because um, it's just not a comfortable thing to have to happen. So, yeah. So now I'm going to get some final tips for the lift. Um, one thing that I recommend is not tucking your chin because what happens when you tuck your chin is you automatically round your upper back. Now, there's going to be a lot of upper back rounding already, so don't add to it. What I found works best for me in terms of neck positioning is having my neck in a neutral position or upwards. This works especially well if you're good at neck extension because if you do a lot of neck extensions, it ties into your traps, right? So it automatically makes your upper back stronger so you'll be less likely to wrap. So, I'm gonna show you how that looks. Hold it right back so you can see. Boom! Easy peasy. So like I said, to recap, the Zercher deadlift, great for making your abs and your lower back, hamstrings, glutes, quads, and even calves so much stronger. I'm gonna be honest. If you can lift over 315 pounds in this lift, your lower back is, is strong. Like no matter what. And if you can do that belt lift, your lower back is strong. Like there's there's not really much argument you can have. Unless your form is just terrible and you just barely got it. But if you have pretty good technique, then your lower back is most likely pretty straight. At least, yeah. Your lower back is most likely pretty strong. And your abs are definitely strong, especially if you're not like, Ugh. but the, that Ugh does happen. Most important thing is if that little happens, be braced because you're gonna need it. 
And when the lift is slow, keep grinding through it. Keep grinding through it because you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna get the lift. Cause it is a mindset. <laughs> Finally, there is no more important tip than the mindset. It is a mind state set. Set state. California. No, but seriously, when you are getting stuck on this lift, and, and you, you saw my 315, right? I was like this. I was like, knee shaking, all oh, the, the hamstrings are popping. They don't want to do it, but you know what you do? You push hard for the floor. You do it because it's worth doing. You're gonna get so strong, and you're gonna be the best in this lift. And from that, they say, "Oh, this lift doesn't have carryover. This is just a goofy lift. Why would you do this lift? Conventional deadlift is the most manly lift." Well, tell my black elbows, my titanium lower back, about your conventional deadlift. Tell me how many times you've seen people and heard of getting injured from conventional deadlift too many times in a week. The Bogues did surgery deadlift for two weeks straight, pretty much every single day. Didn't get hurt. Went up to 525! But the conventional deadlift is the best. All I'm saying is, get your mind right. And for this lift, final tip. Get a song that has a boom to it. So when, like, example, good example, corn, freaking on leash, boom, ta, ta, boom, ta, go. And when it says go, you go. Rage against the machine. Freedom, bring that shit, boom, and you go. Find songs, you can use my intensity playlist, I'll link it in the description. Find songs that give you a boom. I tell you when to go. They give you that, that build up and that breakdown. And once you go, you go, boom, and you scoop that. And you get it, and it's easy. I want to see great things. I want to see everyone post on Instagram. I want to see everyone tagging me, Stradivarius Jake, Instagram. And I will see you guys in the next video. Go to my intensity playlist. Get your surgery deadlift songs on. Almost every song I have in my intensity playlist is all revolved around surgery deadlift, breakdown, build up, all that good stuff. Use those. Kill it in the gym. Use this exercise to make yourself better.